Hey, welcome to the show. Grant Cohn, Coach Noah Johnston. Uh, title of the show is How the Niners Can Salvage Their Offseason and Become Super Bowl Favorites. I think they can do that. And we're going to get into that, but not yet. I'm going to make you wait. First, we want to talk about, you know, the, the pros and cons of Jimmy Garoppolo being here for a while. It looks like probably going to be on this team until he can pass a physical at the earliest, maybe the entire season. So, Coach, in your opinion, what is the benefit of keeping Jimmy Garoppolo? Let's go positive first. You've got a decent <clears throat> backup quarterback. For a very expensive amount. I mean, really, it's right. like if Trey Lance is trash, if Trey Lance is just utter trash and they don't want him to start at all, he's a bust, well, they they have a guy. That's one. A guy. Is trash, I've seen him play a little bit. I, th I don't think he's like Deshaun Kaiser or something like that. Yeah. A, a guy that <clears throat> the, team believe, the team has faith in for the most part. Right, so like theoretically, they could keep him. Uh, he's not going to be at OTAs. He's not going to be at minicamp. He's going to be rehabbing. You give all those reps to Trey Lance, see how he does. Right. If he looks terrible, if it looks like the offense is taking a major step back, you can reevaluate and keep him. Also, also, let's. I'm just trying to list literally every single positive. Yeah. So I can get a right possible in. a possible return on. That's um, what I'm right. A possible Something crazy could happen. Right. You know, someone could get hurt. Someone could retire. Someone could get suspended. Someone could get a DUI, whatever. And then a team gets – it doesn't happen every year, but it happens every few years. Like Teddy Bridgewater mangled his knee that one time in camp, and then that team had to trade for Sam Bradford or something yep. like that. Could ha it happens. So something like that could happen, although, frankly, it's more likely to happen to Garoppolo than to someone. I'm just saying. But, yeah, that, there's that. There's that. There's that. Yeah. 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 But okay. then it's, more, it's it's actually more like that something that will happen, and then some other quarterback will become available. Because every time the Niners, right? Every time the Niners have gotten ready, like, all right, we're we're about to get we're about to get our offer for Jimmy, right? Then all of a sudden, Matt Ryan's available. Like East Bay Chris says, John and Kyle aren't switching their ego, aren't uh, swallowing their ego, and letting Jimmy ride the bench if he's still here when the season starts. Um, I I probably I don't see how you could put twenty seven million dollars on the bench. I don't see how you could put such a locker room favorite on the bench. It's just like. It's like the four. It's like the Giants benching Brandon Crawford. Like it would be outrageous. People would be upset. You know, what I mean, like you either have to play him or get rid of him. I think. Yeah, I think. I think some of that I'll go into, or uh, when we talk about the cost of, because I think it's really cost cost related of what the point that Chris just made. Are there any other benefits here that you know fanboys, sycophants? spreadsheets would point i'm sorry but like am i missing anything because i want to be fair no i want to be fair too i don't i don't see any maybe you guys in the comments can can list some but i don't i don't see any those are the, the literally the ones that we just went over are the ones that the ones that i see i don't i look now you could go up teams could get uh he'll get healthier teams will get desperate maybe um maybe trey trey lance is still an unknown so it gives you a little right. bit of a safety net uh, other people would say that it hasn't cost them anyone they didn't want in free agency. They're always kind of thrifty shoppers in free agency. So it hasn't, am I missing anything? Is there any other, any other things we could add to this list? The benefit of keeping Jimmy Carabo? Cause the list seems short to me. Yeah. That's why I wanted to, you know, I want to go over this. I want to be, I want to try to be thorough, as thorough as possible. At this point, being a official BNA music idiot says at this point, John might say he's waiting for the Nathan Peterman domino to fall. Yeah, I mean, at some point, Jimmy Garoppolo will be healthy and like the number one quarterback on the market because he'll be the only quarterback on the market. But at that point, what's the point? Uh, you, what you get is picks in the future, cap space in the future. It doesn't help you at all this year, but it could help you in 2023. So there's that. Right. Okay. I think we named it all. Now let's go to the cost of keeping Jimmy Garoppolo. I think it's going to be a longer list. Well, you kind of just touched on it. You'd have that money you could use right now to invest to make this team better. Would yes. be available right now. Yes, absolutely. So the cost of keeping Garoppolo is you eventually could get rid of him. You eventually could get something. You eventually will, cre will create the cap space, whether he's cut, traded, um, or just he becomes a free agent at the end of the season. You'll eventually get the cap space for next year. You'll eventually get 
a return for him. You know, if you hold on to him, you get a third round comp pick for him next year. But you get nothing this year. You cannot. And there's a bunch of good players still available. Yeah. There are premium edge rushers, premium corners, premium safeties. One of my favorite safeties, I, I talk about him and Vish talks and talks about him. Edmonds is still Edmonds. Is, he's, he's hanging out. He's hanging out. Premium safeties, offensive tackles, guys who could really put the Niners over the top, uh, guys who could fill needs for them. Um, they can't do that. Right now they have no cap space. So here's what let's say let's say this happens. Trey Lance is the starting quarterback. Jimmy's on the bench. Uh, you don't have a starting right tackle. You don't have a starting strong safety. You don't have a starting nickel back. All of a sudden, the team around Trey isn't as good as the team was around Jimmy Garoppolo. And say, let's say the team doesn't win as much as it did last year, or Trey gets hurt. That's that's the cost of keeping Jimmy Garoppolo. Your team loses, doesn't win as much, or your quarterback gets hurt. I mean, they just made the biggest weakness on their team their offensive line. That's what they've done this offseason because they needed to keep Jimmy Garoppolo. So I think the cost of keeping Garoppolo is, I mean, we're just getting started. The fact that you haven't made a clear signal to your fan base or your locker room that you believe in training. I think that, I think not really having, and also not really having a, a true answer at safety is a big, because the 49ers are heavily reliant on, on their safeties. I think people are going to appreciate if Tart doesn't come back, I think people are going to appreciate Quas guitar a lot more than than in the past because 49ers scheme wise rely on Ward and Tart to do to do some things that the current the current roster guys on the roster cannot do. I I have no idea why people think like Moore is going to be like some breath of fresh air and starting say like we, we've seen we've seen more before like this isn't a got rookie that got hurt and then never got a chance to play like he actually got a chance to start before like and and was not good. Um, Let's come back to the quarterback real quick, though. I'm not yeah. done with that. I mean, it's possible yeah. that they'll bring Jimmy Garoppolo back as a $27 million backup, but as East Bay's Chris said, probably not. If he no. comes back, he'll probably start. So what is the cost of that? Another year of Trey Lance's development. I mean, they'll try to say that, like, you can you can learn stuff in practice, but you don't develop as quickly in practice as you do in real games because practice isn't football. It's not. There's no pass rush. You're not actually learning how to navigate a pass rush. Right. You're learning so, how to read coverages and throw and stuff like that, but it's not the full game. So you can really cost him another year of development. Right. So, and even if even if Trey was the starter, are you going to are you going to give him all the first team reps? Probably not. You're probably going to give some of those reps to Jim. So he's not going to get all those all those reps when Jimmy's healthy, mm -mm. right? Even if Trey's the starter, you right? divide the locker room again. Yeah, yeah. So I, I want to touch on that, right? Because people mm -hmm. be like, oh. Well, who's who's the toxic player that's gonna that's gonna speak up? It's not so much that there's gonna be a toxic player. What's gonna happen is people are going to act. What are we talking about right now? We're talking about quarterbacks and Neil and every team. That's what people want to talk about is the quarterbacks yeah. and the and what was every player asked last year that like they they visibly were Jimmy. fed up about. Jimmy. Love Jimmy, Jimmy, Love Trey, Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy, Trey, Jimmy, yeah. Trey. And what do you think about the quarterback situation? Right. Hey, what do you that think about the right. quarterback situation? It's, Forget what you do. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And whether it's Jimmy that's starting or it's Trey, it's not going to change. Like Jimmy could be the starter and Trey could be the backup. They're still going to ask about Jimmy and Trey. If if Trey's the starter, and Jimmy, like Jimmy, yeah. How, how do you feel about Jimmy Garoppolo being the backup now? What's that like? Well, how do you answer that question? Yeah. It's how do you be, how do you feel about that? Yeah. How do you answer that question? George Kittle. It's like it's like if there was like a last dance. I don't know. It's, I know Jimmy Garoppolo isn't Michael Jordan, but it's like everyone said their farewells, and actually you don't leave. You come back as a backup. That's weird for the fan base, the locker room. It's, I just think it's toxic. Are there more costs for keeping Jimmy Garoppolo? Um, the, the perceived the perceived notion that you don't believe in in your in your third overall pick. I mean, like, it makes it harder to make the transition because, like in twenty twenty three, now you say, okay, here's a guy who started, who really hasn't played in three years. Hasn't played in three years, but now he's ready. Yeah. I don't. I, yeah, I mean, the cost of keeping Garoppolo is extensive, and I think, I think it's pretty clear that the Niners' best course of action would be to cut bait, take the L, because taking the L on Jimmy Garoppolo and just releasing him comes with a seventeen point five million dollar bonus that you can. It's like, okay, we lost, but now yeah. we can, and now yeah. we're going to win in free agency because these guys. Made 
and, and you may be able to recoup about the seven point five back back if Jimmy does get signed. True, you do, which you probably you will. Do. You absolutely do. You just have to write him a check. Jim. Yeah, I'm sure it feels tough, and you don't like spending when you don't have to. You stuck, you stuck uh, Tim Kawakami with the bill that time at French Laundry just on principle. But you give him seven point five million dollars, and you've given him a hundred million already. What do you care? You're still paying D Ford through the nose. What do you care? Just pay him to go away, Jed. Yeah. Pay him to go away. And to be honest with you, like, I don't really know that it's truly, it's truly an L because you you structured his contract in a way where you can get out of it. Exactly. Look at, look exactly. at what look at what Atlanta has to do to get out of get rid of Matt Ryan. Look at what the, the, the Eagles had to do to get rid of Carson Wentz. It's not truly an L. Yeah, you're not getting a draft pick. But you you don't have to eat any dead cap, like oh I think it's one point five right. You have to eat one. I think it's like one point five in dead cap, and then you got to pay him the injury the injury guarantee. But you'll get that back more than likely if he signs with another team, which he probably would. To now me, draft capital though is irrelevant for Jimmy Garoppolo. Everyone's saying that the that cap space is irrelevant, and you need to get the draft picks. Like you're talking about a third or a second at best. This team isn't even good at drafting. They miss as, as even more often than they hit. And they're a really good roster. Like, what is a second round pick going to do in the short term for this team? Like, that's all about down the line, like planning for the future. I want the cap space now. Now. And with, I'm just saying, that's way more. And, and like, I, people are saying to us online that actually cap space now doesn't matter. The Niners have done everything they want to do. And what they really need to do is get a couple of day two picks in the future. That doesn't make any freaking sense to me at all. What? This team just drafted Aaron Banks in round two, and they're really holding out for the next opportunity to draft Aaron Banks? Like, have some humility. You guys aren't good at drafting. You're much better in free agency. Like, like I'm all about draft picks, and I do think there's value There's two va- value in that, and there's value having players, um, yeah. young, play, young players on cheap contracts. Yeah. However, <clears throat> that's what their day three picks are for. That's where they hit. You're terrible <laughs> in day three. What are you – you're not – I think – we can say with some, with pretty with some good certainty that the 49ers aren't going to get a second round a second round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo or better. They're probably not going to get a third round pick or better. So I would say the available even now, even right now, the the guys that are available in free agency right now are better than are better than that. Like yeah, you have to be pay a little bit more of a premium on on them, but it's not that much. Do you know like my favorite safety in free this free agency. You know what his cap hit this year for the Chiefs is? He's Eric, cheaper than Ward. He's cheaper than Ward. Four point five. Yeah, he's cheaper than Ward. Re- Reed's cap yeah. hit. Yeah. And his total, his Ward's total value, uh, Jimmy Ward's total. I think he's twelve. Isn't he like average out twelve million, twelve million yes. a year? Yes. Reed's is ten. I just want to summarize this real succinctly before we move on. The cost of keeping Jimmy Garoppolo is a worse roster in 2022 than 2021. This team is not as good as it was last year. Yes, they got Traverius Ward and some new players on special teams. They lost players on special teams, and they have gaping holes on their in their secondary, at safety, at nickel, uh, at um, nose tackle, with Javon Kinlaw's knee recovers, and on the offensive line. Offensive, offensive line. line is a big one. So either the Niners, are it's going to cost them wins, or, J- or Trey Lance is going to get hurt because that offensive line, other than the left tackle, is nothing. It's 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 as cheap as can be. So that's the cost of keeping Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm not saying well, they could win 13 games and Trey Lance could be the MVP, but anything short of that, I'm pointing to this. And Jimmy then Garoppolo. the the other the other cost is the, is the the lock the locker room, right? You're they're going to be there's going to be cons- considerable focus on the quarterback situation if he's on that roster, and you're not helping your young quarterback if he's there, like. Um, if you want to give Trey Lance some competition, bring in another backup. Bring in another guy. Don't bring in Jimmy Garoppolo. No. Um, so I, I cut these live streams up into videos afterwards, and one is going to be the, the benefit of keeping Jimmy Garoppolo. That'll be about two and a half minutes. <laughs> and then the cost of keeping Garoppolo will be about 12 minutes. So I guess that's pretty real. Delicioso says to all Jimmy fanboys, if he was an elite quarterback, he would have been traded already. Jimmy is overrated rookie with no upside. Let's go Chargers till Jimmy off the team. Damn. Niner fans are pissed. Let's go Chargers. Wow. Hey, man, I'm just happy that I never wavered on my uh, opinion to Jimmy Garoppolo because I thought it was pretty clear. And the only reason to be nice is either 
because you are a Niner fan or you uh, want to pander to Niner fans. But if you actually were, you know, a jerk like me and stick to your guns, you could see it. So I'm, I'm glad I did. I took a lot of crap for it. But I think Niner fans are right there with me now. They're like, get off the freaking team. Now. Most of them. Most. most. There's, there's the Yeah. Cost of keeping Jimmy is my fanship to the Niners. Damn. John Lynch, are you watching? Wow. Jed York, are you watching? It's realist. That's the realest thing I've ever heard. All right. How the 49ers can become Super Bowl favorites today. Now, this is my plan. I'm not, I'm not putting words in the coach's uh mouth. I'd like to hear what he thinks of my plan and what his would be. But to me, like the Niners have totally botched the offseason. Signing Traverius Ward was nice. And the special teams move they've made are cool too. But stopping there, they botched the keeping Jimmy Garoppolo, they botched it. But there are really good players still available. Uh, just so happens. And the Niners can clear 17 and a half million in cap space right now. What I would do or what John Lynch, I think, should do to, to get people on his side again and to actually make a push for this year uh, is cut Jimmy, get the cap space now, and sign three players. Sign Zadarius Smith, st- sign Stephon Gilmore, and sign a right tackle. And I know people are going to say, you can't have all this money for all this stuff. They got to extend Debo. They got to sign Bosa. Uh, with you, when they extend Debo and Bosa, every time they extend a player of their own, that guy's cap hit is pretty low for the first two years. And that's for most players. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, usually the extension, like the big, big money comes down the future. Look at Kittle. Look at Armstead. So that's going to be when the cap goes up ginormously. They can work that out in 2023, 2024, 2025. I think they absolutely could fit. Man, this is so real what I'm saying. I'm going out of focus. Well, I think they absolutely could fit all of these contracts under the cap this year, figure it out in the future. And again, like if they have some tough decisions they have to make in the future, man, that's the cost of going all in. That's the cost of going all in. You have to take risks unless you're content with being a contender, being fifth or sixth best team in the league and sort of getting to the playoffs and seeing what happens. Uh, I'm not like that. I grew up with Eddie D. He made his own luck. Jed and, and Parag, the financial analysts, do not see the value in doing that. They like just, you know, having their cake, eating it too, planning for the future, planning for the for the present, doing everything, looking at the data, making the smart move, but not reacting, not, not uh, thinking on their feet. So that's what I would do. It would actually take a little reacting. They didn't plan for Gilmore and Zadarius Smith to be available now, but they are. Go get them. But they won't. They freaking won't. And that's because they're cool being, I think they have the sixth best odds to win the Super Bowl right now. That's good for them. They can profit off that. They can sell out Levi's. They can go to the playoffs. And that's great for Jed. I think that's cool with him because he's had years where they were the laughing stock of the league and he just doesn't want that anymore. That's what I would do. What do you think? What would you do? Uh, I think I probably agree with you. I agree with the general concept of <clears throat> of going and getting some some players. I probably would do it a little differently to me. I, I touched on you Edmonds Edmund. or I would I would go get Edmonds. Um that's cool. Hey man, go get Edmonds. I love that. Right. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. but I don't know well, that I would get an edge rusher in round two, right? I mean you could you can move you can you know who you, you know who's Zadir uh, wasn't Zadarius Smith injured last year? The whole year, except for one game, yeah. Okay. And playoffs. Okay, like but there's other there's there's other edge rushers. I, I don't know what his what his cost would be, but like yeah. you could also get Jason Pierre Paul. Um sure. He's, sure. he's out there. Yeah, he's, he's out there. Um, uh, G- yeah, uh, Jerry Hughes is out there, but I don't know if I would pay. But like, there's there's options out there. You can there's options out there. You could go get. Is it there- like if the Bills would spend all that money on Von Miller? Like, why should the Niners not consider spending all this money on Zadarius Smith? If the Raiders would make an investment in Chandler, oh. why would you not be one of the teams considering oh. this? Hold up. I, I'm the Zadarius Smith though. I, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure that they would have to spend a lot of money on it. Fair. Why? Okay, sure. look at look at the Niners. What I could pitch this? Hey, Zedarius, you're just coming off an injury, an injured prone year. Like you so want that? Big, deal. Yeah, you want that big? Deal. You yeah. Do, look, look at what look at what Chris Kosarek does for guys like like um, you know Arden Key and uh, and I always forget the, the guy right. in, the guy in Seattle. Like imagine Kerry if Heider. Yeah. Uh, Kerry Hyder. Imagine if you you know how yeah. good you are. Imagine if you played in this system. Yeah. Next to Nick Bosa. Imagine how many sacks you're going to get. Imagine your contract next year if you sign a one-year re- relatively cheap deal. There's no reason not to do this. They should do it. 
uh, to me, like Eddie DeBartolo was dying to make those moves to put him over the top because he wanted to be the best. I don't, I don't, I think Jed York would like to be the best, but he hasn't shown that he's willing to do what it takes. Now, yeah, I do yeah. think. Yeah, I, I think that could be a pitch. I do think Stefan Gilmore. I do think you're gonna have to throw as much money as possible for him. He like, I don't think he's, I don't think he's ring hunting because then get Edmonds. Then get Edmonds. Yeah, just give me a, a nice, a, a good, a, a, a DB. star DB. A star yeah. DB. Yeah, get one of the two. I mean, there's so many options, man. There's so many good players right but, now still available. But Grant, who knows? Like, have you seen some of these contracts, how they're set up? You might be able to get all three or four of them. Like, I, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. It's not that hard. The Niners are acting like like Nick Bosa and Debo Samuel. Their cap hits are going to equal $25 million. No, this year. because they won't. Look, what, what the cap hits, if they, if they extend them, if they extend them, what's going to happen yeah. is, the only cap hit that they're going to take ad additional to this coming year is the prorated salary bonus, which is going to be. They're still going to be on their rookie deals this year. Nothing's yeah, going to change this year. And you don't have to do Nick Bosa's now because you got him. You got a fifth year option, which you don't necessarily want yeah. to take, right? But if right. you, but you could also, if you do Debo's, you've got a, you got a franchise tag that you can use on Bosa and like he's not going to be able to walk away from you. So no. you've got time to do that. Yeah. You can, you've got dot time to do that. And while his deal might exponentially get higher and higher the longer you wait, but you you've got time. The cap is going to go up. You've got time, and also you can see is he going to get injured again? You, you also got. I mean, I kind of want to would want to wait on that too and see if he's going to get injured again. So I just think it's it's just wild that the Niners were this close. They're in the NFC Championship game. Uh, I mean, lost a very close game to a team they'd beaten six times in a row, and their strategy for free agency is to sign one starter let go of a bunch of starters, focus on special teams in depth and keep Jimmy Garoppolo and say, that's good enough for us. Like, man, that's not the Niners I grew up watching. Eddie would never let that happen. It just shows how different Jed is. Like Jed is a financial analyst. Parag is a financial analyst. And this is the smart play. Uh, going all in is not what financial analysts do. You're mortgaging this. You're not allowed to mortgage the future as a financial analyst. You're not allowed to do that. In the NFL, I don't know. That's what I grew up on. I also – That's what the Rams just do all the freaking time. I also think that there's – I also wanted to touch on another – you said offensive lineman or offensive tackle. I definitely would address somewhere on the offensive line. Get an upgrade somewhere because what I don't like is I don't like – I want to – when I think I've talked about this last year with, with some of the rookie quarterbacks. Like I like being able to protect my young quarterback as, as much as possible. I don't want him – him feeling the pressure. He doesn't know what he's looking at. He's yeah. going to hold the ball longer than Jimmy Garoppolo. There's no question. He's definitely going to hold the ball a while. And he's going to be able to escape to escape pressure, but he's going to take hits in the process. Yeah. You might want to protect him. And people are like, oh, look how stupid Trey Lance is. He can't even call protections. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, what about his offensive lineman who can't protect anyone? So, yeah, the Niners, they could follow this strategy. There's plenty of strategies they could do. The main point is they could cut Jimmy Garoppolo and, and sign – multiple starters or high level starters, but they don't want to do that. And they're gaslighting you and telling you they don't need to do that, which is, I mean, if you, if you feel like being one of the best teams is good enough, then yeah, they don't need to do that. But if you feel like once like these windows don't come around that often and you can't ex expect to have a team in this position for a long time, that when you're fortunate enough to be in this spot, you got to go for it. Then it's frustrating because, you know, as Vish pointed out on my show yesterday, like, these franchises come and go. What if Kittle really is injury prone and his and he tears his Achilles this year? What if Trent Williams gets hurt? I mean, that happened to Harbaugh's team. He had the best team, and then Alden Smith's life fell apart. Twenty four, uh, Navarro Bowman's knee exploded. Patrick Willis retired at thirty. Justin Willis, uh, Justin Smith retired uh, sooner than expected. Colin Kaepernick didn't live up to expectations. I mean, everything fell apart in two years. So, you, th I mean, that happens all the time in the NFL. It's not basketball. There's brutal injuries. A lot of turnover. So I, it's kind of, I don't know. In my opinion, it's a little arrogant to think that I was going all in next year. Next year? You don't even know if you're going to be alive next year. <laughs> next year? Wow. All right. Well, trust the process, huh? Yeah. And then I haven't looked at it, but what's also, what, who, what's the free agency class look, looking like next year? Like, I don't Again, know. Another thing, too, is like, Okay, so the Niners will have cap space next year, and, and the cap's going to go up. Every team's going to have cap space next yeah, year. Yeah, it's relevant. It's all relevant. Every team's going to have cap space next year. So you're going to be the team in California 
Northern California, where none of these players are from, want to be too expensive. Are you going to be a player in free agency? And what if you miss the playoffs? Yeah. And and you don't think like you don't think that's the secret and and like agents don't know that next year so agents are gonna be like oh yeah we're gonna we're gonna work off 2020, 2022 figures not twenty twenty three like <laughs> but if they make if they cut Jimmy now they all of a sudden be one of the few teams with cap space available up uh, and they'd be one of the few teams that could actually make serious offers to Terrell Edmonds, Zadarius Smith, Stephon Gilmore, Teron Matthew, whoever the hell they want they would be like the only the only real Team in the market. I mean, the only real team that can make big moves. But no, they want to wait till next year when every freaking team's gonna have cap space. Okay, let's move on. I'm getting I'm getting worked up. Yeah. Uh, Moisha says slow and complacent approach to trading Jimmy stinks of York ownership. Not enough urgency, too much arrogance, and too much trust in Mr. Perfect Lynch. Great. Grant, I did want to touch on something that I agree, Moisha. What's I up? think you uh you t- I think you mentioned you mentioned Jed York, and I think in, in talking about this whole J- Jimmy Garoppolo situation and everything, you think uh, you you said that uh, Jed York needs to come in and and ask what the fuck, right? Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, I think you're wrong, and I'll tell you, I think you got the wrong person. Who? John? Yeah, who's John? Who, who's Denise? the guy that came and visited the 49ers last year, and then all of a sudden? Yeah, like John like thinks it's all good. He's like, "Oh damn, I got a meeting with John and Den. Oh damn, yeah. damn." Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like Daddy, said, like that. Daddy like, John has to. Yeah, yeah. Eugene says uh, center guard Brad Bozeman to the Panthers for two point eight with one million guaranteed was the perfect deal the Niners could have done for O line even without Jimmy Cap space. But no, they didn't get him. Respect Eugene for doing your homework. Fans need to boycott home games with Jimmy here, says Jordan Somerville. Oh. I'm for it, man. Boycott. Do it. Send a, send angry letters to John Lynch. Come on, man. Why not? Pen pal. I got, okay, I wanted to go further. This, this is just, I have a question for you, for the viewers. Are the 49ers inept when it comes to choosing quarterbacks? They've done a lot of good stuff. They built this team from scratch. They've been to two NFC championship games and the Super Bowl. There are a lot of things. Good. They have a lot of premium players. But their journey. To find a stable answer at quarterback has been spectacular in a way. Can we just go through it real quick and, and appreciate it? Because I think sometimes we forget how wonderful this journey has been. Let's start. Okay, so 2017, they decide not to scout Patrick Mahomes or Deshaun Watson because they want – and instead, they sign Brian Hoyer so they can get Kirk Cousins the next year. That's where it all starts. It's a great start. Yeah. It's a very ambitious start. So they don't scout Mahomes or Watson. Watson's going to come back in the story. Wait for Watson. So they can sign Hoyer and wait for Cousins. Midway through the season, they panic and trade a second round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo with two career starts and one career shoulder injury. That's what they do. It's, it's, it's an ambitious move. Some people might say it was worth a second round pick, but in retrospect, hell no. Okay, so they spend that. Five starts, five wins. They make him the highest paid player in the league and give him a no trade clause. Wow, what an investment. Okay, so that's just like year one. Then he gets hurt, not their fault, comes back, goes to the Super Bowl, but everyone knows what he is. Kyle Shannon knows what he is. He blows it in the suit in the Super Bowl. They have an opportunity probably to trade him for a first round pick sign Tom Brady. They don't. Okay. Next year, gets hurt, have an opportunity to sign him for whatever and trade for Matthew Stafford. They don't. Instead, they make a much bigger investment in a quarterback who's played one year of college football. That was their choice. I'm not saying it's wrong. They could have went for Stafford and got rid of Jimmy. Like the Rams got rid of Goff and got Stafford. They got a Super Bowl. Niners didn't do that. They traded for Lance. We like Lance. We thought they liked Lance. But everyone knew the dude had started one year of football in college. Then he comes to the Niners, and the Niners have this epiphany that he's inexperienced. So they keep Jimmy Garoppolo. And Lance doesn't play. And now this year, Deshaun Watson's back on the market. They could get Watson after passing on him. But no, they can't. Because the assets they that were required to get Watson, they traded for Lance the year before, who they're still scared to play because Jimmy's still on the team. That's where the Niners are in year six of Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch. That's crazy to me. And so my question is, can you really trust those two to make the right decision when it comes to quarterbacks ever? Yeah. yeah. The, the other thing, I mean, 
the other thing that they could have done too this this year is because there's there's still a lot of questions regarding a, a Watson and that contract that the Browns had to give them is is crazy, right? Like, is it 46 mil? 46 so, mil, man. Get, so get, trading four, three first round picks and a third guaranteed for guaranteed. for Lance as opposed to Watson. I mean, one is a an all pro and the other is a total unknown, and you gave up the same package. That's cr- I'm just saying. But I'm just yeah. and, and and they don't even believe in him. They gave up the Deshaun Watson package for someone who's an unknown and inexperienced, and they bring him in and they panic because he's unknown and inexperienced. Like, really? Yeah. A word? Come on. Like, where's your conviction? I think, I think when I looked at that, and it is true that it's the same, it's basically the same conversation, but everything is basically relevant to the market and relevant to the present time. At last year, this time, it didn't look like Deshaun Watson was going to play. No. Football. It just adds insult to injury, you know. They so there were and, coming, and there were like, and, and last year there wasn't like one third of the league available for one third of the quarterbacks in in the league available. So it's all like relevant to the market. Like I don't think I don't know if the 49ers would have to trade that much to get Trey Lance if he was in this draft because it's it's a different market. Um, it's also there's also a lot to be said for something that you're a big proponent of is having a rookie on uh, a quarterback on a rookie deal. Like, but they're not taking advantage of it, man. No, they're not. No, they have the most expensive quarterback rooms in the league. Yeah. And then there's another thing that they, another move that they could have done this year, which was use a third round pick, get Matt Ryan, and you still have all your, your first round picks. Like, and he would know your system. So there would be, You'd, he'd be able to walk in the door. All this urgency to trade for a quarterback last year, but you didn't play him. Yeah. You could have just not traded for it. If you knew that you were going to stick with Jimmy Garoppolo last you could have not traded for a quarterback last year. I mean, there's so many things they could have done. I'm not saying that trading for – if they end up – if Trey Lance ends up being an MVP, then all this will be – you know, it works out. But, man, like, their process is ridiculous. They don't have a process. They don't have a plan. They traded for someone and then were scared to play him. Still scared to play him. And they gave up so freaking much. The amount they gave up for him that you would think that they were totally sold. Oh, I don't care what his experience is. We got he's gonna be great. And they're like, actually, did you know that he'd never he's never led a two-minute drive? Like, yeah, everyone knew that. You traded up for him. You just had this epiphany now. What the hell, man? I'm and then, sorry. And then he did it. Didn't he do it? He did it in the NFL. Yes. Yeah, he did. He's like, you literally were right there watching him do it. But then they're like, nah, we got to play Jimmy. I don't get it. I, I'm losing. And and now, like, this, why I'm talking about this now? Because they still can't figure out that they need to cut Jimmy Garoppolo and move like, on to Trey Lance. Like, it's it's been time. Even my dad was all about keeping Jimmy Garoppolo last year and, and moving on to Trey. He's like, hold on. They're keeping Jimmy? That's a very bad – everyone understands – this is a very bad decision for Jimmy Garoppolo to be on this team next year. And, and, and it's looking like that's going to happen unless they cut him. And if you cut him in July, like, great, you wasted your opportunity to do anything about it. So I think it's very strange. Yeah, I think I it's like fair it. to wonder if this team is inept when it comes to picking the quarterback path. I like the decision to that they to draft Trey Lance and what they did to go and get him. I like that. I just don't like what they did after that. Nope. Like, I would have preferred nope. – to go all in on Trey, let him play, let him play last year, and even even if you were going to do that, I would have preferred to start Jimmy a couple games, but then move on and, and put Trey in there. But they've done none of that. They did none none. It's just crazy to realize like the Niners gave up a lot for Trey Lance, and it was kind of hard in context to realize like how much they gave up for Trey Lance. But they spent more on Trey Lance than the Rams gave up to get Stafford. They gave up as much to get Lance as the Browns gave up to get Watson. So these are some of the like top 10, top five quarterbacks in the league. And the Niners gave up that trade package for a guy that they don't want to play, that they're scared to play. Like when you give up that much, you should, you're telling the league, this guy is special. This guy is going to be great. And like the Niners saying, yeah, he will. But like seven years from now, (laughs) to me, that's crazy. I saw him in camp. I mean, maybe he's a little rough around the edges, but he's better than Jimmy Garoppolo. And this, like, they're just straight up scared. It's crazy to me. He might be the right quarterback, and they'll they're too scared to give him a chance. Crazy to me. They 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 made an investment like they thought he was the next Patrick Patrick Mahomes. Then they looked at him for like a week in training camp, and they're like, you know, he's a little inexperienced. Like, <laughs> yes, uh huh, uh huh. 
Yeah. Like, what are you doing? I don't get it. Yeah, and, and if anything, it. and if anything is this year has taught has taught you like, okay, so if he's if he's not that guy, like look at all the quarterbacks that were available this year when people thought that Jimmy was the only one available. Like, okay, if he's not that guy in a couple of years, you might have a, a third of the league out there for you to get after you know in yeah. in a couple of years. So. Yeah. Uh, burden of proof is on John and Kyle here. They have had a crazy path to picking a quarterback. And if they don't, it doesn't work out for the Niners. If, if they get fired, if they don't win a Super Bowl, you can always say, you know, they built a hell of a team. They just never figured out a quarterback. And they had like forever to figure it out. Uh, Merkin says, try you season coming up, play the kids. I like that. I like the way that sounds. Although I wonder. You can't ever really pencil that in around here. Damien says is Debo and Nick Bosa's agent waiting for other players to sign their contracts so Debo and Nick can get the highest paid contracts. Uh, Niners new GM Grant. Usually those extensions happen right before uh, training camp starts. Like Kittle signed his right before training camp. It's like, oh, is he going to report? Is he going to hold out? Is he going to be on the field without a new deal? Boom, he gets a new deal like the day before. Yeah. It's a deadline business. Chris says Jimmy Garoppolo was worth the pick they gave up. The contract was the mistake. Entire front office is inept and should be replaced. Wow. They're content being the Packers, always in the mix, but never going all the way. Yeah. Like I had, I had a debate on, on a, on a post before, like someone was saying that we should have faith. We should have faith in the 49ers because they've built, they look at the championship rosters they put together. I'm like championship. Like I don't recall them winning a champ. Like no. to me, a championship roster is when you win the NFL, unless you mean an NFC championship, right? Like, I keep hearing the startups in Silicon Valley. Like a lot of times startups make a lot of money, um, but then they get to the IPO phase where you got to go public and sell. And whoever that's you know, like created the company and built it doesn't necessarily have that skill set because they've never done it before. What their skill set is, is building, building the, the, the startup off the ground, but not necessarily taking it over the top. And if you struggle for a couple of years, your <laughs> company is going to look for someone to replace you who could do it, who's done it before. Yeah. So look, I mean, they've they've messed up two great runs, 2019, 2021. Both should have won and ended in Super Bowl championships. At what point do you say thank you for what you've done? Now we got to look to the future and get people who can finish this. That, and I'm not saying throw the whole organization out, but like John Lynch, how are you an asset now? I mean, like Kyle's an asset, I guess. John, what about you? What do you do? Or is, or is your job here to just drag your feet on the Jimmy Garoppolo deal? Is that what you do? Because if that's what you do, then we can promote Adam Peters now. Shout out to Barry, OG Legends, Lowell Cohn, Ira Miller, Larry Kruger, and Grant Cohn. Thank you, Reeves. OGs. Eugene says, McDaniel Lynch, Kyle Shanahan all talked about Jimmy Garoppolo and his world-class throwing ability. Thought they were gassing him up, but they overvalued him in free agency, so it looks like they really believed he was world-class. Three-fourths three of, three of those names that the guy mentioned were actually appear on your show. Yeah, it's true. I don't understand why people thought that Jimmy Garoppolo had a great arm. Like he had a, a good arm, a quick release, but uh, he, the thing with him is he never actually sets his feet. So like whatever arm strength he could muster isn't there. And I think that really upsets Kyle, but I, I don't know if that's like a, you know what, Kyle, maybe you should get a good quarterback coach for a change. Cause they had a good quarterback coach in, in new England. And it seemed like Jimmy actually drove his throws. And didn't just flick them off his back foot. So maybe you should be a, have a better quarterback coach. Maybe that's on you, Kyle. Maybe Jimmy actually throw better when he leaves, which will never ever happen because he's going to be here forever. <laughs> Most Kyle and John admit defeat and clean up the mess. Never. No. They're never going to take the L on this, and it's too bad. Imagine getting a seventeen point five million dollar bonus when admitting an L. Oh, here you go. Prize. It's a prize for admitting an L. All right, let's keep going on. Do winning now and preparing for the future have to be divergent strategies? I'm over here saying they got to they gotta go all in. Can they do both? Yeah, because you can sign you can sign free agents that are young and in their prime and also good, and that will help you right now, but it also helps you in a couple years. Like, you know, two of the names I liked was Terrell Edmonds and, and – uh, and Reed, right? Justin Reed, both 25 years old. You give them multi-year deals. Guess what? When you sign them, they're going to be on the roster next year. Mm -hmm. be on the, and guess what? When they're on the roster next year and the following year, uh, and the cab balloons up, they're going to look hella cheap. <laughs> like, like, like even even with their even with their salary at 10 million or 8 million a million, that's going to be really cheap. 
So you don't necessarily have to say, okay, we're going to go all in this. You can do both. You can get, you can get players and have them on your roster for the next couple, next couple of years. And they doesn't have to be 35 year old, 35 year old guy. It can be guy in their twenties. Now they sort of missed the boat a little bit on this now because some of those players are off the market where they could have been, if they moved on from Jimmy earlier, they could have had, they could have, they might've had more money than 17 point because if they had just, if they had, if someone had had given them a seventh round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo, he would have been on their roster and they wouldn't, they wouldn't have to deal with the 7.5. So they would have had what 25 million in cap space. Um, so I, I don't think they have to be, they, they don't have to be separate strategies. They can, they can go all in or, or go in on this year, but then also provide a team for the future too. But choosing to like Traverius Ward was one of those was one of those things. Like he was young, right? He's young, good corner. Maybe you know you you could argue J.C. Jackson. J.C. Jackson was you put more money in that, and you go and get J.C. Jackson, who was an All Pro. But both of them are young and good corners, so I like that move. But you don't necessarily have to be like. Oh, um, let's get all thirty-year-olds and go on and for this year. You can you can get young guys and it'll put you in a position this year and next year. Well, that's what they're doing. That's what the Niners always do, and I don't. I disagree. I don't think it works. I mean, I don't think it works anymore. What the Niners do is have their cake and eat it too. Just like when you said they signed Chavarius Ward, uh, they got a guy for now and in the future, but they're as concerned with the future as they are with the present. Like they're not going to waver from their business methods to compromise the future. Like they'll keep themselves in contention now, but also always with an eye to the future. That's why it's more important for them to get a third round pick in 2023 for Jimmy Garoppolo than to have 17 and a half million in cap space now, because they're constantly trying to have their cake and eat it too. And I think it's hard to win a Super Bowl that way when you have lots of teams going all in every year. The last two Super Bowl winners are teams that have made huge investments in that particular season. And so the Niners have put themselves in a spot where they're one of the best teams in the league, but they're always going to be going up against teams that are more committed to that particular year and have made some, uh, they've mortgaged them to their future more than the Niners have. And that's going to get in the way. It's going to be in their way. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily, I would disagree. I wouldn't necessarily put the Bucks in the same places, same place as the Rams. Because if you look at the moves that the Bucks made, the, the Bucks made, made a lot of moves on the, a lot of young players that put them in position to, to win now and the next year. They weren't like the Bucks weren't, the Rams were like this. The Bucks weren't necessarily like the Bucks didn't necessarily mortgage their future for, for the present. Like they didn't, they made a lot more moves in 2020 than a starting corner and uh, special teams. Yeah, they did. They did. Yeah, but they did. They did make a lot of, but a lot of their moves were were with, I think, were with younger younger players that were going to be on their roster for for. for well, sir, but I'm, all I'm saying is like preparing for the future is essentially trading players for draft picks and assets, and win now is sending out assets for players. I mean, they're pretty much the opposite thing, and you can do a little bit of both, but at a certain point, you got to decide what you want to do. And right now, the Niners are more interested in trading Jimmy for an asset than creating cap space to bring in players. And that's a problem to me. To me, they're not reading their their situation correctly. That's what you do when you miss the playoffs. When you're in the NFC Championship game, you should be trying to – you should look at yourself as one of the top 10 teams in the league, an opportunity to be the best. So right now, I don't think this is the year to have your cake and eat it too. But maybe I'm wrong. It's what it's how they do business though, and they're not going to change. It's how they do business. Yeah, I think I they can I think they can eat they can eat a little bit more cake. Like like I don't should probably don't really have to eat all the cake, but they have like one little sliver <laughs> slice and they're like, ooh, that's enough. I'm <laughs> I'm watching my weight. Like, what are you talking about, man? Gorge out. Gorge out. What are you doing? Yeah, the, the, I mean the other thing too, it's uh, you know, if you're looking to have cap space next year, you know, if you sign if you can work out one of these de- deals on a one year deal. Guess what? That guy's off your team next year. You'll have the cap space next year. Like yeah. you'll still have it, right? But yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, the Niners have been on like a, a 20 year quest to prepare for the future and go all in at the same time. So maybe they'll do it eventually. I mean, that's what they tried to do last year, right? Even they even traded the, and they, they, brought, they brought all their players, they brought all their, they brought all their veterans back to run it back. And then they dr- spent all their draft picks on players that were going to redshirt. I mean, they did that last year. And they got to the NFC Championship game. It almost worked, but it didn't. 
an aggressive move like signing JC Jackson is not necessarily it's a move for for going all in now, but it's also a move for the future because he's young. Yeah. Like yeah, you're absolutely. paying you're paying a premium, absolutely. but but he's young. Like at a position where you need youth, like corner. I mean, all these young guys are handing starting jobs to this year without any competition or or, or resume. Aaron Banks, Talano, Funga, Javon Kinlaw, like those aren't all in moves. That's that's the team. That's those are moves of the team that's needing to get something out of their investments for the future. When we drafted these guys, high, we got to we got to see what they got for the future. I mean, I don't know. To me, the Niners have been one foot in, one foot out for a very long time, and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Pick one. Pick one. Seriously, but I don't know. Coach disagrees. That's fair, and I respect Coach very much. Yeah, I, I get I get your point, but I think I think you can accomplish both by by I think you can accomplish both by who you sign. Like I'm like be aggressive, be aggressive in signing. Don't sign a bunch of Richard Sherman's. I get that. I'm with you on yeah. that. Yeah, I do. I do absolutely. I, I agree with that. I do. David Sanchez says the faithful more like the faithless. Thanks, John. John, you're unpopular. I, I suggest signing Terrell Edmonds or Zadarius Smith today. People would like you again. What are your thoughts on Brady being a Niner ass AC? There are speculations that Brady's trying to do that. I think that's over. Yeah. I think it's over. I think he was trying to do that when he was retired. Fort Niners daddy says just need to cut Jimmy now. All a part of the plan. If we were honest, we always knew we wouldn't get anything for him. Pump and dump wasn't it. Yeah, that's why I made fun of it the whole time. And people said, why are you being negative? He's really playing great. Look at his QBR the last four games. And the whole time I was like, you kidding? And it was like the Niner fans were like, look, we know he's trash. All right, look, we know he's trash. But we're not going to say it out loud. We're going to make the argument that he's good and another team is going to fall for it. Like, nah, everyone knows he's trash. Sorry. Yes. That's the way it happened. Cap speaking says, okay, hear me out. Jimmy to the Browns. He holds it down for Watson's suspension for next season. Then Browns let Jimmy walk. We take Mayfield and have a better chance of trading him. Away. How the hell are they going to fit that in the South? <laughs> They're already. I don't think that's going to happen, man. But it's. I, I don't think it's going to happen. Hold on. Let me see how many. How much cap space the Browns have right now? Browns. Over the cap. Well, they don't have Watson on here. Oh, do they? It says they have twenty six million in cap space. I don't think they'd have to create a little bit more. Man, that's a lot of money for Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay. If they want to do that, great. But I guess this that's maybe that's another benefit of holding on to Jimmy Garoppolo. You can find out if Watson's suspended, and then the Browns can make a stupid decision. You I could, don't know. I doubt that's going to happen. You could trade Jimmy for a second next year mm -hmm. or this year, but then you give the other team back your first in, like, 2024. But you just put that in, like, small little writing so fans don't see that. So, oh, we got our second. John Wayne says, wave Jimmy G, re-sign Jimmy G as Trey Lance's backup at a reduced rate. No one else will sign Jimmy until he's healthy. Yeah, man, wave that dude. Cut Jimmy G. Cut Jimmy G. <laughs> Hold on. I put, it's like, people didn't want to hear this stuff in the past, but I wrote that the 49ers should uh, cut bait and release Jimmy Garoppolo and 756 people have liked that in three hours. So I think Niner fans are right there with me. And – They've kind of they've hurt themselves in this respect because if they had just cut him at the outright of free agency, he probably would have been signed by another team. They wouldn't be on the hook for that seven point five. Now, is this true? Is this now, true? Is this what? true? The Darius Smith Vikings? Is that true? I don't know. Hold on. Yeah, it's true. Three years, forty-two million dollar deal. Are you kidding me? That's it. Three years, forty-two million dollars for Zadarius Smith. And he's probably it's it's probably like his probably cap hit for this year is probably like seven. I'm upset. Seven million. That's what the Niners are paying Traverius Ward. That's nothing. Three years, forty-two million for Zadarius Smith, who's legitimately better than Traverius Ward. Damn, that's nothing. See, this is the cost of keeping Jimmy Garoppolo. Big fish off the market. You could have had. He wasn't even that expensive. What the hell is that? He went to the Vikings. The Vikings are more aggressive than the four. The Vikings. Vikings aren't even good. Damn, man. That's got to sting. All right. So forget Zedaria Smith. Oops. Who else is on the uh, the market, edge rusher wise? They could get J Jihad Ward, and then they could have three Wards on the team. 
John, you're messing up, man. John, you are messing up. You've you weren't even interested in Zadarius Smith. Were you ever interested in him? No. Too expensive. Trey Flowers, Jason Pierre, Jason Pierre Paul, Jerry Hughes, um, Jadavion Clowney, uh, perpetually on the market. Uh, so now the Niners have like four spots that they have to spend their second round pick on. They have to spend it on an edge rusher. They also have to spend it on a safety and a nickel and a right tackle. So they need they need to find a player who can play four four positions. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we need a, a safety slash nickel slash right tackle slash edge rusher. I think they can get that in the second round at the end. Yeah. And again, like the Niners are in this position where everything is about the draft. They they have to fill all these holes in the draft. They didn't get a pick for Jimmy. They probably could have got that pick that uh, Indianapolis traded for Matt Ryan, but they didn't want that. They didn't get that pick, and now they have to get like four starters in this draft, and they're not that good at drafting. They're they're like mediocre at drafting at best. They're like every other team. They miss a lot. And now they got to draft four starters in the draft. And they don't have a first round pick. Sweet. John, you're killing it right now, man. I'm so impressed. Everyone is really juiced on what you're doing. Nice job. I, I'm probably I'm probably less concerned about the edge than than other positions because they've shown the ability to find guys and then have and have them to be able to produce be a good team this year. I'm just trying to have, I just think, you know, I don't know. I, I think Super Bowls are fun. I like winning yeah. Super Bowls. I, I'm pro Super Bowl. That's me. I'm pro Super Bowl too, but I think, I think, I think Coach Rick is going to be able to coach a guy, coach guys up. And uh, Epicom showed a lot of promise at the end, at the end of the year. So like, uh, if, if there's a position that I would choose, if I would put like the pecking order of where they need to address, I would say like, I would say, you know, Right tackle, safety, um, was a nickel, um, and then you know edge would be edge would be toward the bottom. Just I value the position pro- probably more of those more than those other positions. However, I think with what they have on the roster and the guy that they have there has shown the ability to produce secondary edge rushers than than at the other spots. El Jefe says, "Whose fault is this, Jimmy? Whose fault is this, Jimmy Garoppolo or Lynch? When you interview anyone again?" Uh, Lynch was interviewed in about a month before the draft. It's Lynch's fault. It's the front office's fault. And I'm reading an article. The Niners spin is coming out. And the, the, the spin is that it's no one's fault, although it's Jimmy's fault for having the surgery. But it's no one's fault because, you know, Jimmy, uh, he didn't want to have the surgery. He got hurt. He's, but it's no one's fault. No, nah, man, it's John Lynch's freaking fault. They should have traded this dude before the Deshaun Watson came on the market because once Deshaun Watson came on the market uh, – Matt Ryan came on the market. No one knew that Matt Ryan was available three weeks ago. The Niners could have took advantage. They didn't. And so the Colts got a sweet deal. It's Lynch's fault. It is John Lynch's fault. John, it's your fault. Don't let him off the hook. I love how people are so quick to be like, no one's at fault here. Uh, yes, somebody. Yes. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's his job. Like, that's John Lynch. this is John Lynch's job. Merkin says, I think Jimmy had a market up until his last drive in the championship. He looked pathetic. I think he had a market uh, up until Deshaun Watson hit the market. Then it was over. There was a market for Carson Wentz. A lot of people think Jimmy's better than him. No one likes Carson Wentz. No one likes Carson Wentz. There was a market for him. The thing about Carson, though, and I think what people are kind of downplaying is Carson at his best is better, is way better than Jimmy at his best. So, that, like, when you're talking about potential, right, like – People yeah, forget. But, I mean, the, the Washington messed up. Like they traded three, two threes for Wentz when Ryan went for one three. Like you messed up. What did you get? What did you do? What did you do? He's on his third team. Like he he might be. He's not that good. I think it's. I think it's all. It's all market based, right? Like because you got to look at what ha- what happened. Like this was this is a progression of things, and it was all pretty much started by the by the Watson thing. Matt Ryan, I think, is available because of Watson. Because the Falcons started to flirt with Watson. Then once that happened, Ryan was like, "What the hell am I doing here? When I'm I'm like putting my effort in this shitty ass team, and and like you guys are looking to get rid of me? Trade me, trade me. I don't think he was. I don't think the Falcons were really looking to trade him. You know, prior to, but once that happened, I think. And then one, and then then the market for quarterbacks was like was slimmer so like that's what all they could get would be the third round pick the falcons probably could have gotten more 
Earlier. Amadeus 24 says it would have been better if they lost week 18. National media thought Jimmy Garoppolo was a winner than everyone watched him play. He got so much credit for that game week 18. Just nauseating. Ugh. Ugh. Irfan says should SF sign Kerry Hyder? No, but they certainly will. I'm sure they will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They will. Route Runner Niner says why Jed York hasn't stepped in yet is beyond me. Because it's not Jed. It's business as usual in San Francisco. Santa Clara is how they do business. John yeah. needs John needs to, to step in, not Jed. Yeah. Um. All right, last topic. Can the Niners develop starting offensive linemen? I think it's TBD because I know, like, all right, so let's look at what have they really invested in this position to develop, okay? So they drafted they drafted Mike McGlinchey with the ninth overall pick, right? Ninth overall pick. They drafted Aaron Banks. They drafted Aaron Banks. But after that, they, they have day three guys. What? They drafted day three guys after that. Yeah. Day three guys. At Two, half, at half. Pivots, more. Yeah. Yeah. If if you look in this league, you don't find those guys in the sixth, seventh, fifth round. Like tackles exist, starting tackles, you get them in, largely in the first round, some in the second, and then you here and there you can find them in third. There's not many guys that are late round picks. So you're not invest really investing the resources that you need to in this position. And the first time they spent an interior pick was on Aaron Banks. And honestly, like I know that he they was inactive all last year, but I don't know that, that to me that that's an indicator that he's not good because the 49ers have taken other young players. Now they didn't they were didn't make Brandon Ayuk inactive, but they weren't playing him. If you extrapolate that over to Aaron Banks, could it be possible that Aaron Banks was actually decent but they just didn't want to play him it's possible because it happened with their other players they didn't want to play they didn't want to play their others their other, they didn't want to play Ambry thomas for the longest time all these trey lance they wouldn't play trey lance so yeah it's a little alarming that he was inactive but i don't necessarily know that that means that he can't that he can't little play. alarming little <laughs> alarming dude they didn't want him to back up they didn't want him in the game trey lance could go in the game they didn't want Banks in the game. Like they, they're like, if anything happens, it's on freaking. Who was their Who was their backup guard? Who was their backup guard last year? I don't even know. Even, but even so, if I even so, if I gave you that, you that means for five positions, right? Five five positions. You've only spent real capital a first round pick once, and then a second round pick. Okay, well, the first round pick never got better. Like they could have taken Colton uh, Miller, who everyone said had upside, but they went with the right tackle because he's was pro ready. He never got better. And then they they developed Daniel Brunskill, who's a a low level starter in the NFL. Other than that, they haven't proven they can. And last year was disconcerting with Aaron Banks. So if they want to take another shot in round two, be my guest, but I wouldn't advise it. I, I think the issue the issue is not necessarily the, is not necessarily the development. I think it's you have to put more resources into it. I think they're not putting enough. What how what did they spend? What did they put into their their wide receiver position? Like how many how many second round third round draft picks did they put into that position? You know, like yeah, it's true. Yeah, at I mean, a position, they take an offensive lineman around two again this year. I mean, they could. They could. Not they even should, not, no, how about one from Notre Dame? That works out. How about now? How about round three? Like take take round three. How about round four? They go they outside of McGlinchey and Banks. It's round five, round six, and I then mean, you're. I mean, if the Niners really want to get legit starters on the offensive line, you probably got to get those guys in round one. To your point, interior. Yeah. I think you can, I th- interior you can get you can get I think later. But that's like, what they said when they drafted Aaron Banks. I'm so yeah. sorry. I am so sorry. Even yeah. Josh Garnett was a first round pick. It's it's not that simple. But but I think you address address it with more draft picks though. Like, not people like to look at the draft like as if every draft pick is going to pan out. It doesn't happen that way. Like you have to you have to invest in it. It's the 49ers, if they have if they had got three starters from last year's draft, that's like a that's a really really good draft. But coming back to the, to the original question, like, can the Niners develop starting offensive alignment? They haven't proved that they can. They haven't proven. Maybe they can, but they haven't proven it. So. Is it smarter for them to pour more second round picks into guards or maybe go get one in free agency? Trade for one. Because considering they've had no success doing the one thing and some success doing the other. Well, I would say, I would say to you, do one or do one or the other, because I think the problem isn't isn't that I think it's a the problem is 
investment in the position. I don't mm-hmm. think it's like I think if you throw enough, if you throw enough picks at the position, you'll probably get it right. I, I think like or you could talked go- a lot about the benefit of having Chris Kasarik. You mentioned it right now, and Bobby Turner. I, I don't think they have that effect. I mean, maybe maybe Chris Forrester's good, but I ha- I mean I haven't seen him develop anyone on this team yet. I think you got to give him more. I think you got to give him more tools. Sure, you gave him you gave him Trent Williams, but like shit, I can I can coach Trent Williams. <laughs> like like uh, I I and and then Alex Mack. Like obviously um, he's okay, but he's he's older. But like, I think you have to invest invest in that position. Like what have they really invested? They've invested they, money in Trent Williams. Seems invested. like their best investments have all come not in the draft. Trent Williams, Legan Tomlinson, Weston Richburg, Alex Mack. Even Daniel Brunskill was undrafted. Like none of their draft picks at at, at uh, on the offensive line have been good starters. Like you had McGlinchey and a bunch of backups. So maybe if they spent more first round picks on the position, because apparently second round wasn't good enough last year. But they don't have a first round pick this year next year. You're making you're you're making that conclusion with when they only spent one second round pick on that position, though. Like if you took if you if you made that same assumption and and did that with every other position off of one second round pick. Like you can't really make that assumption off of one second round pick. I'm not making an assumption. I'm just saying they have no track record of success on this route. They have some track record of success on this route. I'm taking that route. I think the failure rate, I think the the average failure rate on second round picks, I think it's in like the, I think it's, it's in the 40%. I think it's 40%. 40, it's if, if anything, it's. Yeah, then get that second round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo because that's going to change the franchise. Right? <laughs> they're going right. to get two. They're going to get two. They're going to get two. Yeah, uh-huh. Big Dez says Niners going to play the long game, draft and make moves, and sign the best who's left after Clowney, for example. Well, they were kind of in the market for him a couple of years ago. I mean, he's a Darius Smith to the freaking Vikings. Well, good for Minnesota. <laughs> I can't get over that. Anyway, wow, that's our show for today. Ryan Starr right at the buzzer says outside the box if Ambry games weight becomes free safety. This team needs to stop changing people's positions. Sorry, Ryan, but <laughs> right. stop doing that. that's they that's another stop doing that. Right. That's they another thing. They they drafted they drafted these tackles in the sixth and fifth round, and then they're like, oh, they're gonna play guard. Like they drafted Aaron Banks last year, and he's he oh, was Tom big. Jensen at the buzzer too. Come on, coach. Two first McGlinchey OT and Garnett OG. Garnett was in Banks Gar- in the second. Still. That's that's freaking Parag and the scouts. It's the same scouting department. Meanwhile, no first or second on secondary since Tartan fifteen. Yeah, what about that, Coach Garnett? Garnett wasn't this. Wasn't it's the wasn't same scouting team. department, man. It's the same philosophy. I'm saying Parag. I think, yeah. and the fact that they haven't taken a DB has has spanned multiple uh, regimes as well. They need to put investments in the secondary. In the draft, I to me, I I want secondary in the draft, offensive line, and free agency. I'd agree with I'd agree with investment in secondary in the draft, but I would say the same thing if you missed on if you missed on secondary on secondary picks, and like you're and then you're looking at you know a one second round pick and saying oh they suck at drafting in. The I didn't secondary. say they suck, but I feel like you're trying to say that they that they could do it. I'm like, well, there's no evidence of that either. Right, I, I agree with that, but but like. But there's no evidence that they're not good at it because they don't. They haven't invested the resources in it. They've invested more than they've invested in the secondary. Uh, no, when they draft a a guard yeah, and give them number yeah, sixty-five, yeah, yeah. it's over. It's over every time. Kiss of death. So I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, Aaron Banks, you better change that number. It's not going to work for you. It's cursed. All right, that's our show. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll be back at two with Jack, talking about the same stuff. No, things are going to happen. They're probably not probably going to trade Jimmy Garoppolo, and then we'll talk about that. So stay tuned. <laughs> They're going to get two, fir- two, two, two seconds. Two seconds in the first, a conditional.